As you will see in the footage accompanying these words, you don't have to be the best blade and sorcery player in order to complete it and enjoy all of the challenges that it has to offer. You don't even have to be as good as your average YouTuber, but you might appreciate a little bit of help from these tips and tricks. Like tip number one, aim for the head. The opponents that you'll be fighting throughout your crystal hunt, and there will be a ton of them to fight, have the same weak spots that normal humans do. They also react to being hurt, a lot like normal humans do as well. Stabbed in the arm, then they might very well drop what they're holding in that arm. Stabbed in the head, well, then they're dead. The head and neck are always the most vulnerable spots on your enemy's bodies. Even the ones wearing plate armor can be taken down quickly with a thrust to an unprotected face or neck. So if you want to take down an enemy quickly, then aim for the head or neck. Give them a smash or a stab in one of these vulnerable places, and then you will soon have one less opponent to worry about. Tip number two, use the right weapon for the job. Precisely aiming for an enemy's weak head and neck is easier against lower tier enemies, but gets harder once you start fighting well-armored knights. Even the cruder armor that earlier enemies wear on their bodies can block the blade of a sword, and the further you get in the crystal hunt, then the more armored enemies you will encounter, making this blade and sorcery tip important in the mid to late game. This is where blunt weapons come in handy. While not as great at hurting unarmored flesh as bladed weapons, blunt weapons like maces and mauls don't care much if what they're hitting is covered in armor or not. They're also great for knocking down and stunning opponents. The effectiveness of weapons against armor also depends on the quality of that weapon, which you can view in your inventory screen while holding the weapon in question. Generally, bladed weapons of higher tiers are better at stabbing or slicing through armor, while maces of higher tiers generally bash better than earlier ones. Some weapons are also lighter or heavier, and so what you prefer comes down to personal preference, as well as what opponents you're facing and what challenges you need to solve. Having both blunt and bladed weapons equipped and available might be beneficial to you, so you could try to specialize in one or the other, but you could also have both. It's easier and more effective to deal a lot of damage if you're precise with the blade. Though, if you just want to smash your enemy however you can without caring whether they're armored or not, blunt weapons are always effective if you land your blows with vigor. Tip number three, choose your crystals carefully. Speaking of playstyle, one of the most important and more permanent choices you will make in Blade and Sorcery's Crystal Hunt is what magical crystals you pick. Different types of crystals give you different types of magical abilities, and those different abilities greatly affect how you play Blade and Sorcery, so let's talk about them real quick. While a complete overview of the powers that each crystal type gives you is a whole video in and of itself, Here's a few tips. If you want your bladed weapons to be better at piercing armor, then imbuing them with fire will make them pierce metal much more effectively. At the same time, the gravity crystal is great for imbuing blunt weapons to knock enemies into the air. Gravity magic also gives you a lot more options when traversing levels, like the option to blast yourself up high or slowly fall from a high place to avoid fall damage. If you want more health and survivability, then the body crystal gives you some general combat upgrades that also increase your maximum health. The Lightning Crystal is great for stunning enemies, and is also useful if you don't want to be overwhelmed by a large group. So is the Mind Crystal, which lets you slow down time. This can be particularly useful if you get overwhelmed in large or fast fights. The Mind Crystal also greatly expands your telekinetic powers beyond just grabbing items. Keep in mind that you can get up to three of each type of crystal, and the more you invest in a single type of crystal, the more powerful the abilities you get from each is. It is generally better to specialize in a few types than spread your investment of crystals out, but that also depends on your preferences. The most powerful abilities are locked behind higher tiers of crystal. There are an absolute ton of abilities to unlock, and there are even certain abilities that you can only get with certain combinations of crystals. If you're the type who wants to plan out your build before committing to which sort of crystals you want to get, then you can always check out all of the crystals and what their abilities are in sandbox mode. Though beware of getting too far into the sandbox, as there might be some story spoilers. Tip number four, bring plenty of healing items. Of course, one of the greatest magical abilities that you start Blade and Sorcery's Crystal Hunt game mode with is your inventory, which can store a massive amount of items right from the beginning. Honestly, it's more storage than you will probably ever need. If there's one Blade and Sorcery tip that is both obvious and essential, it's to not lose all of your health and die. Healing items will, of course, keep that from happening. As soon as you've got the cash to spare, you should be filling that inventory with more healing items than you'll probably even need. While this might be somewhat expensive in the early game, as you get further into the Crystal Hunt, you'll have plenty of opportunities to make money, more on that soon, and the number one thing that will increase your survivability is having as many healing items as you need. Think about it, potions, eggs, and apples don't weigh much, and having a few on hand at all times can be the difference between victory and defeat. Being able to top off your health between or even during fights means that you'll be able to take a lot more punishment if you get roughed up earlier in the run. So once you've got some spare money, it can save your life to make sure you've got at least a couple of potions on you at all times. 
Tip number five, weapons can be found, but armor must be bought. You'll notice pretty early on that while you can pick up weapons from fallen enemies in Blade and Sorcery, you won't be able to keep them once you finish the dungeon that you're in. Think about it, you only really need to take down one or two enemies at the beginning of a run in order to pick up a half-decent weapon off of them. There are some weapons that enemies don't wield and must be bought, like big mauls and swords mostly, and if you want to invest your money there, go ahead. They are your coins after all. Though if you want to play as optimally as possible and increase your chances of victory as quickly as possible, then it's wise to invest in some armor before you spend your money on weapons that you can just pick up from enemies anyway. You can't pick up armor during your runs since armor has to be bought and equipped before you go. Oh, and when you're buying armor, keep in mind that it has stats just like weapons do. Some armor is better for spell casting and some for survivability. Make sure to pick what fits your playstyle. Tip number six, you can always repeat missions for infinite cash. Of course, you don't have to think so stingily about your in-game money if you don't mind a little farming. If you want, you can run as many dungeons and arena battles as you want to collect more cash. You don't have to go to the runes to collect your next crystal once you have all the map pieces you need to find it. You can just keep doing outposts and arena battles instead. So if you just want a little bit more cash to stock up on healing items or get that next piece of equipment you've had your eye on, you can do as many runs as you'd like to collect more money before getting your next crystal. Of course, better equipment becomes available later on in the game once you collect more crystals and the rewards get better for each run as well. Though of course, like in many games, these better rewards come at the price of more difficult enemies. Oh, and keep in mind that in outpost missions, your goal is to get to the end and get the loot from the chest in the final room. The enemies there are obstacles, not the goal like in arena battles, so you can sometimes just run past them instead of spending more time fighting. Oh, and make sure you check how big of a reward you get for doing a mission by looking at the stack of coins icon above the travel button when that mission is selected on the map. The bigger the stack of coins, then the bigger the payout. Tip number seven, experiment. You would be really surprised at how many effective fighting tactics there are in Blade and Sorcery. Some are, of course, dependent on what crystals and equipment you decide to invest in. There are a lot of different combinations of sorcery, weapons, and tactics that can be extremely effective against your enemies. For instance, on my first playthrough, I quickly discovered that, since I started with the lightning crystal background, I could stun my enemies with that lightning and then quickly attack their faces, and that was a very effective tactic. You might find new uses for your spells or imbue your weapons with them more often. Blade and Sorcery can just be a game of smashing your way through your opponents if you'd like, but if you want to be really effective, it will take a little creativity and a little bit of experimentation. Experimenting is where a lot of the fun of Blade and Sorcery is, and also how you'll find the most effective ways to use your items and abilities. As a thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video, here's a bonus Blade and Sorcery Golem Fighting tip. To defeat the golem, you need to destroy each of the pink crystals on its body, and some of those crystals are shielded and will only be vulnerable after you break those larger blue crystals that is spread around the golem combat arena. These pink and blue crystals can be broken by hitting them from afar or with ranged attacks, but you might notice that some of the pink crystals on the golem are harder to attack than others, especially those on the golem's shoulders and back. However, whenever you break one of the blue crystals, the golem will be stunned briefly and take a knee. This gives you some time to jump on the golem and break a crystal before it recovers. So when this happens, quickly run over to the golem and break one of the crystals that are harder to reach, like one of the ones on his shoulders and back. Don't waste that opportunity on a crystal that would be easy to break anyway. Once you break all of the crystals, then the crystal shard inside the golem's head is yours for the taking. Anyway, that's it for all of these tips and tricks for the Blade and Sorcery Crystal Hunt game mode. Hope you enjoy Crystal Hunt, hope you enjoy Blade and Sorcery, and just have fun out there in VR. This has been Reality Remake. Thanks for watching.